So this is basically um, the external scan. So when I basically come into external scans, um, there are three sections I can see. One is basically called domains, one is rules, and one is jobs. Now the domains essentially talk about what do I want to scan? I can basically choose to scan a single IP address, or I could basically upload a CSV, which uh, contains a list of IPs, and then basically get them all scanned. Or I could basically scan a single IP, and um, or I could basically scan like a subnet range basically by CIDR. So, and then I can define what's the start IP, what is the net mask, depending on. So, if I basically choose IP range, it'll ask me for the start IP and IP. If it's a static IP, it's going to ask me for one IP address. And then you can either choose to basically attach it to a site, or you don't choose to attach it to a site. And then you can enter any tags that you want. And then there's this field which is called enable full scan, which allows you to do. So the normal scan is to essentially look at the thousand ports commonly used. But if you enable full scan, then it essentially kind of goes through all the 65,000, 65535 ports that could be potentially opened and then basically tries to figure out if anything is open over there. Now, the rules are basically defined so that you can define like what ports are allowed on a per um, company basis or a scan basis because. You can essentially say that um, in this customer port 443 outbound is open and that's okay because they're using certain uh, applications from uh, from their work outside their workplace and that is secured. And we have a mitigating factor, which is a web application firewall, which essentially we have secured. So you could basically say that these ports are allowed and these ports are denied. And then when basically the jobs run, they actually show you like what happened with these uh, reports. So you can see a report of uh, any scan. So it basically tells you what is the, uh, like what report it found and what was it, et cetera. So all of those details are there in the jobs. So these jobs will show you those. But in also in addition, when you go back here and then you click on this particular device, you will essentially see the list of vulnerabilities over here. You will see what applications it figured out um, and which are uh, <clears throat> problematic. And if there are any basically ports which are non-compliant, it basically comes up here. And the cool feature that we have is that we also have an ability to figure out like what is the new ports. Like for example, yesterday there was like port uh, 22 was not open, but today's scan we found port 22 open. You will see that in the tip status. So that essentially will come up here. Um, so that uh, is there. And then we have a complete SSL report which talks about like did we find any vulnerabilities with your um, uh, scanning your uh, uh, server? And then, like for example, here, like uh, the return of the blind buffers or Oracle threat or client initiated negotiation is allowed, etc. So these kinds of uh, pieces, like if TLS 1.2 is enabled in your network, which can be insecure, all of that is basically figured out, and it basically kind of gives a full report of that entire piece. Shiva, um, if someone does a scan and it doesn't produce any results, are there common things that you would troubleshoot? Um, most likely, uh, what happens is like there are a number of places where, uh, first is, of course, uh, IP address is wrong or the host name basically cannot be resolved. That's one common issue that we see. And second is that um, uh, certain uh, so certain firewalls will essentially see that somebody is scanning their device from outside and basically kind of uh, block it out completely. So essentially, we'll not be able to find any uh, any data because it just blocks the source of the scan itself because it believes that it's under a denial of service attack. So those are kind of two situations where things may happen. Third is, of course, it might be a genuine bug that you figured out, but uh, what we've seen till now basically kind of indicates one of these two situations. Got it. And if it is a firewall preventing it, is there anything that you recommend to get around it that we would, uh, so that they could scan for other potential vulnerabilities? So it's usually a setting in the firewall, Andrew. So they should basically look through a change management and take it, um, uh, take that off for a couple of hours while the external scan is done. And then basically put that back on, and that way they could be able, they'll be able to extract the report from it. Okay, perfect. And Dennis is saying you may need to whitelist the public IP that scan that the scan originates from in your IPS. Thanks for that, Dennis. Um, so, 
Uh, and then Tim says, does the 